I am going to start. What do we want to start with? I wrote down a list of a few things people want to do. Traveling, um, blocking. Block. Um, some playing. Frank asked for a few obscure things that I don't think I have video on. <laughs> I, asked, I asked for blocks and I asked for the uh, like how to go about uh, assessing if like there's a technical because there's an error in the book or something like that. Cause I think that popped up like three or four times and they often happen in the middle of the game. You know, you get the eh, eh, in the middle of, you know, so it could be the second quarter and you're like, Oh, four teams come to check into the game and uh, they're not in the book. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm just staying refreshed on uh did I lose everyone. Yeah. I got all your daughters up here now. There we go. Yeah. I, I, yeah. What's, what's the, what's the all right. Well, I can see by the crew there's going to be a lot of mistakes in this game. <laughs> I lost the video. There right, we go. Why well, are you in there, Vito? Oh, we got Kevin <laughs> Bullmore. <laughs> I know. All right. Vito's in prime form tonight. Now, get yeah, hey, I just a long want... time. I haven't busted anyone's balls in a long time. <laughs> I just want to mention. I have, I have done zero preparation, so some of these videos I pull up, and we're just going to see what it is. I mean, I know it's a, I know it's a, a play on a block guarding situation. I just don't know what the play is, so just bear with me, all right? Let's start the play. Everyone can see the video, correct? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Block. Block. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, block on the play. Down here. Yeah. Right? right? I'm going to play it yeah. again before we go slow. Um, and you have legal guarding position. Right. That's Late Kevin. So he kind of used his hip to kind of check it. Does he have a legal guarding position? Because when it comes down to blocking, whether you call a block or not, it all comes down to what? Legal guarding position, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So he has two feet on the floor and he's facing his opponent. I'm going to pause right there. So right well, now, he's got a nice leg. Does he have a legal guarding position? No. Yes. No, he doesn't. His legs are outside of his shoulders. All right. So whose legs? Hers? I could see that possibly from this angle. I can't see how far it's sticking out, but you could be right. I would. That's a good block. Here's his torso though. And what does he do? He slides into him. He yeah, moves he moved toward the player, so the the contact was initiated and caused by the defender, right? Which means block. Now, Vito, I don't want to diminish your point because that's a good point. His leg looked like it was out, but where was the contact when it happened? The contact was in the hips, not really in the leg. Although I guess he kind of slipped over the leg. But the He's point of this forward. the point of this clip is he was moving toward the player. Absolutely. All right. That one might have been easier than – they're not all hard. Right, this is a good one. Good job on lead, letting C have it. <laughs> right? All right. Now, for those of you that aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel, first of all, you need to subscribe, hit that like button, smash that – all that stuff. What, what's it called? I just – you know what? I'll, I'll uh, give it to you at the end. But um, all right. I just released a passing crash segment. That's good. I watched it. And, Josh, uh, I watched it already. So Tim's already up to speed, but my point is. He's got no speed. I forgot what my. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll check it out. All right. All right, let's get started. Um, Can we see that? Right here under the basket was the foul. I want you to watch it again before I play it slow. Now this concept is kind of hard or, misfor or forgotten or misunderstood or I don't know what the word is, but the rule, it's in the rule, 471C. If there's less than three feet of space, the dribbler has the greater responsibility for the contact. If the dribbler is going down a sideline, 
or in between two defenders and there's less than three feet of space, he shouldn't be going there. He's not allowed to go there. So the, for the contact is on the dribbler for the most part. So when the contact, that's, yeah. that's three feet of space. Here's how you can tell. I'll slide it up. Look, right? Three feet from the block to the line. So that's definitely three feet of space. He's going to a spot that's less than three feet of space. I got, I got to pay. I'm passing on that anyway. Absolutely. I that agree, should be, man. that should be a no call. I don't suggest calling a player control foul. No. Dribbler put himself in that position and he was going nowhere. He had nowhere to go. Sure. That's why you take a pass on it. He had nowhere to go. Right, Vito? Absolutely, Tim. Now, that's some what I may would say, have. some may say, Vito says so. what's the reason he went out of bounds? He got bumped out of bounds. Fuck. But that's on him because he went to a right. place where he had nowhere to go. No, it's again, Jack. I'm going to look at the defender. The defender went in a straight line. The defender wasn't what, Bill? It looked like the defender went in a straight line. So, I mean, he didn't go into him. Right, Bill. I think you're right, too. And you're right. The guy ran out of space. That's what happened. He just ran out of space. Yes, there was some contact, but I don't think the defender moved toward the opponent. Inside <clears throat> yeah. And all the blocks and or player controls and or passes really comes down to a minuscule amount of motion that we are ruling on. And so it's easy to slow it down and to say this is a block, this is a charge, this is a pass, obviously. Real time, it's more difficult. We have to make those split decisions. We need to be aware that just because there's contact doesn't mean there has to be a foul. This is good. I'm having fun. Yeah. All right. Are we good on that one, or do we need to talk more? I wonder. Who... Go ahead. Boys in the back. All right. Who's got a TV or something on? In the background, turn it off or, or mute your microphone. Otherwise, I'll have to do it, but I don't know how to do it. All right. Here, I'm going to mute all. If you want to talk, you have to unmute yourself. All right. I don't mind you talking, but for those that have got something in the background, it's distracting to everyone else. So if you want to, Make a comment. You have to physically unmute your microphone now. Okay. Here we go. This one's fun to me because look at the coach's reaction. The play is with these two players in the in the bottom. There was no call. No call. The coach wants something, but what do we have? Did he get shoved? Now you have to unmute if you want to talk. Can I can I see can I see it one more time, Josh, please? Absolutely. Josh, do we have an extended arm bar by the defensive player? Well, that's what I'm asking because the coach who's up in arms is, is the coach of the green team. It, Josh, it kind of looked like we have a hold there. It looked like White got his hand kind of tangled up in Green's jersey. I don't, okay, I, don't I, know saw, if I that. saw that. Are we going to call this a hold when he grabs his, his shorts there slightly? I'm not. Now you pass on that. If he, if it really causes to alter his RBSQ, then yeah, you got to get it. And that's a split second decision you have to make. But what looks like to me, it didn't have any effect of that player at all. What the player did was stop and kind of fall back on his own. He didn't get pushed. He didn't get he didn't get altered. I don't think the extended arm bar did anything. Yes, technically, by rule, that's a foul because he extended his hand toward the offensive player and made contact. But if you call that a hand check foul, you better call it all game. Josh, can you go back to right where he does that on bar and then watch the feet, though? Watch the feet. Right there? Keep going. 
Keep going. Right there. Yeah. But... Are you suggesting he traveled? He did travel. I'm suggesting he lost his balance there. But and the travel was caused by the arm bar. Because look, we agree that he stopped the dribble here. Bounce, and now it's under his hand. Do we agree? You agree. So I could say maybe he stopped it here with both feet off the floor. That's what I, I mean. With the travels, and I, I do like to nitpick and, and split hairs on travels, obviously. But in a real game, splitting hairs on a travel is pretty hard to do unless you're going to do it all game. Well, not just that, Josh. That the referee on down at the base there is so close he's not going to see that he's looking above the waist for any you know push off or you know foul. all right so, Vito that's a good point and this would not be the lead's call even though it's right in front of him right it can't be his call because as you said he's way too close that's where the trail has got to come in a little and help out with the footwork I'm not saying the lead shouldn't referee that play the, re the lead absolutely needs to referee that play but it's when you're that close, it's hard to see foot to head to foot. Is that your point, Vito? Yes. That's trail, trail and C's call is the travel calls. Because if it's kind of in your area, because that is in Leeds area. Leeds area that that's inside Leeds area where it not where it began, but where it finished, it was in Leeds area. But unfortunately he's right on top of it, Absolutely. which is hard to see a travel. So when the play comes in, it's right now it's trail. It's right on the verge of trail and, and lead, and the right. lead is clearly watching the, the right. post. post. When this comes in, the lead has to be aware and, and make some kind of movement. And maybe it's not going to help you at all in that half a second. But And you've got no room here with your leaders, but you got to do something to try and put yourself in a better position. I agree. And this trail, this trail should have really closed down a little bit to help them out, too just in case, because he can always back up two or three feet and move in two or three feet. Let's watch this one. All right, hold on, play it again real quick. Watch it again. It was a, a foul was on the defense. Do we agree or disagree? Yeah, he pushed him with his legs, it looked like. Thought, thought it was a good call. Well, who initiated the contact? I'm going to do the slow again. Who's initiating the contact, the dribbler or the defender? Is the defender staying legal? No. Moving forward. Yeah, but in slow motion. Here's the dribbler's path. He's moving in a straight line, right? What is the defender doing? Going forward. Bodying up. He's crowding him out of that path. If I am a dribbler and I'm, I'm, I'm on a path, it doesn't have to be to the basket. Any path. My path from A to B cannot be crowded out. The only way I can stop him is if I legally put my body in a position in between him and that path before he gets there. No time or distance, but I got to get there before he gets there. This one, he, he totally crowded him out. He hipped him out, right? Yep. We all, yeah. we all agree with that one, I think. Yep. All right. One more block, and then um, <clears throat> one more block, and then we'll um, move on to the next. Okay, we have a file down here. It's a foul on the defense. Benny, his leg. Yeah. We, we like that call or don't like that call? I don't I like, like it. that call because it was me. <laughs> Vito likes it. It was his call. He's sticking with it. All right, um, let's play it out. Vito. You know, was that off the ball? No, the ball was coming in. No, no I understand right that. But, 
And here's Plus his he's leg. holding him there. What does he do with his leg? Okay. He sticks his knee in between his legs. He sticks it right up his crotch. That is illegal. And Vito, I'm proud because many guys don't call that. They let Okay, yeah, I didn't see that. They let the post play on, and while the two guys are vying for position, you can't stick your knee in a guy's ass. That was I, mean, a good I usually call. warn guys and say, get your leg out of there, get your leg out of it. If they don't, then you call it because we used to, I used to teach that play. Actually, I got a funny one in a, in a men's league. This one kid that used to be, uh, he's my son's age. I taught, coached him since fifth grade. I go, hey, that's illegal. You can't do that. He goes, you're the one that taught me that. <laughs> that's when you quickly apologize. I said, I go, it was legal then. It's not anymore. <laughs> You know, you used to do you do, used to do that when you played. <laughs> well, yeah, I was only six foot, covering guys six five, six seven. <laughs> you know, I can't claim whether it was or was not legal then, but I would venture to say it wasn't legal then either. No, it's never, it's never legal. I think it was legal. It no, was legal Vito, it ain't legal. Seven, eight years because, ago. That's just because you didn't know the rule. That's because you didn't know the rule. That's because <laughs> that's because nobody knew the rule. That's not legal. Me. I was holding your shorts, stepping on your feet. <laughs> I don't know if it was, was illegal. I don't know if it was, was illegal, but I think out, you used your arms and everything. <laughs> that that, that, that doesn't mean it was legal. Didn't they make it a point true. of emphasis that's a few good years point. ago? Uh, yeah, guarding in the post play has always had a point of emphasis of some point every year. All right, yeah. should we do some traveling or let's see some fighting? Fighting. Let's see what I got. I don't have a ton of fighting, but. Well, here, come to my house. We've had plenty of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really fighting, but here's that's like technical fouls, kind of. Where'd it go? About fighting in a locker room with your partner. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually pretty good. That was pretty good. Never sent me any of that video, video Tim. <laughs> Lots of that. All right, watch it again. Okay, so we have a dunk, right? Over top of a player. Now, first of all, do we have a technical foul for hanging on the rim? No, no. This kid is clearly underneath him. Right now, whether the guy's hanging on it to hang on it or hanging on it to spare the, the kid, we don't know, but he shouldn't come down. So that's not a technical foul. Correct. Look, is this kid even trying to get out of the way? No. no. Not even trying. Right now, as he tries to come down, the, the offensive player, the white player, grabs the kid's leg, probably because he was pissed. I don't know. To prove a point, maybe. And then what happens? You, then the, then the, the ref from lead comes in and tees him up. Do you consider what the blue player did a, a, a fighting act, or was it just kind of a push get off of me? Well, let me, re let me rewind it. Shoulders, it looked like, from this side. I think you could call double technical. Did he, but did he throw an elbow into the kid, as in almost like a swing or a punch? Just because I swing an elbow, that can still be a punch. Would you agree? Yeah, elbow yeah. is more dangerous than a fist. <laughs> a fighting act. So we did not constitute it a fighting act, but it was, it, but it was considered a flagrant act. It was considered fighting. So, so the question gone. is, if this is considered a fighting act, not flagrant, but fighting, do we just have one fighting? Or two. Both. I think you got a double technical, but if you wanted to call a, a flagrant on, on uh, the white, then I think I'd be all right with that too, because he instigated the whole thing. But blue yeah. did retaliate. Who always gets caught? The retaliator, right? Okay, so is, go ahead, Frank. This is during a dead ball, right? So it has to be. It has to be. It's a dead ball. Right? That's the it's very dead point. ball. You're right, Frank. Good point. So, 
what happens on this is we have a foul because if you look at the official, he grabs his arm, his leg. Oh, I got the foul right here. Foul yeah. on white, totally. And then the kid does a little pushback. So now we got a technical foul, right? Yeah. yeah. But Josh, you can't you can't even go common foul on that because because it's a dead ball, right? Or am I wrong? That's that's correct by the rule. Once the ball goes through, even if the clock doesn't stop, it's a dead ball, which is. You have to be a technical or I think ignored, right? Okay. But what – we don't even know what was administered at this point. What happens? Foul here. If it's a – if it's going to be a technical foul, do you not stop the clock with your fist? Yeah. You're supposed to. Right. Oh, no, if it's going to be a technical foul, you stop it with your hand. But the, but the, clock, is, but the clock is still running. Oh, you right. You have to okay. stop the clock with a signal. That's good. You stop the clock with a fist. That's so good. Good go job. Up. And then if it's a by rule, if it's an intentional, a, a, a technical intentional foul or a intentional a flagrant technical foul, then you administer appropriately. But you always have to stop it. And I know most of us don't. I'm, I, I'm at fault too. We just go boom because that's what we do. But by rule, by mechanic, you're supposed to stop the clock first. Okay. Yeah, but here's another thing, Josh. Once the ball goes through, even though the clock continues to run, the ball is dead. That is correct. So that is then – so actually, Blue could have a dead ball technical for pushing him back. Did he get a technical or anything or no? You just, you just charged White? What did, you, what did you go do? Oh, no, no, no. They both got one. Because they both got White, Because even if White didn't <laughs> do anything and said, you suck, man, right. and, the other, and the other kid pushes him back, that's still one on both of them. You, yeah, have I agree. To get, you have to penalize the one who instigates the fight. Right, but so did you eject the white and the other kid just had a technical on blue? Is Kurt Gibson on here? Kurt? <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, can you come no. in here for a minute? No. We didn't, we didn't eject either. We, what we called was two intentional technical fouls, which are oh. not ejectable fouls. Right. Just because it's fighting doesn't mean you're ejected. Fighting changes how you administer, but only a fighting, a flagrant fighting act do you eject. Does that make sense? Mm, I don't know, because isn't if someone, let's say someone's on the ground and someone cocks their arm back, you could throw them out for fighting because that's an act of fighting when you have your arm cocked, even if you didn't hit them, because that's, that's instigating true. a fight. I don't I think Josh, I think you're instigating you, I, a fight that's just as guilty as a fight. I think Josh, you're interpreting it wrong. It's not I wouldn't call it fighting. You 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 got a double technical, you play it, you you don't shoot and then you play on. You don't want to throw those kids out of the game. Okay. I don't, Article I don't think you call that fighting. Josh, Article can you just run the video one more time? Sure. Uh, and I'm gonna talk while this runs, unless it's gonna distract you. No, go ahead. Article eight. In Rule 10, Section 4. Yeah, I'm just going to put my hand in the air there and, there and give both those kids a technical foul. Put my hand in the air, stop the clock, and I'm going to give a technical foul to both those two. So that's, I just, just want to say Article 8 in Rule 10, Section 4, which is player technical foul, Article 8 says be charged with fighting. The penalty for Section 4, all of Section 4, there is no special for, for Article 8, Two free throws plus the ball at the vision line for a throw-in. The disqualification in the note is a single flagrant technical foul. No flagrant. There you go. You don't want to have a flagrant. Technical foul charged to a player results in disqualification. So just because it's fighting doesn't mean it's an ejection. It's there you go. It's a technical foul. Okay. Right? So you then need to determine was the fighting act flagrant. A lot of no. times it's not necessarily flagrant, but it could be. Right. All right. So, think, so here, go ahead. Here's another thing. Run that, run that, and watch what the referees do. What happened? Watch the whole thing. Yeah. Too many. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Hold up, Tim. This guy left because it was a made basket, and we're not anticipating any problems. We haven't right, had any right. at this point. Okay. Just keep watching. Keep I know watching. what you're gonna say, Vito. 
Yeah, I know you do. That's what I said. Hold <laughs> on. Wait, where the referees are. Three officials on Who's the watching of them. the benches. Three so, of them. This is a very this is a very important point, Vito. That's one, what I say. One of these officials has to stay to the side and watch the benches and watch the coaches and watch the players that are not involved. Because what if there's two guys over here that are fighting? You've got six eyes on eight players. Not to oh, mention that's... this coach runs out. Is that legal for this coach to run out? Yes. It is. Yes. Brand new rule change. Any Assistant coach, two. Any Assistant coach can two. come out as long as we're assuming they're trying to break up the fight. Now, if the coach swings at somebody. <laughs> hey, look while they're there. Look in the foreground. There are people coming down the stands, too. That's yeah. why right. that third ref ought to be watching. This is yeah. right. He's not worried about right, this. Bill. He's got to be watching. <clears throat> He's got to be watching the benches. And that's why we try in a pregame. You know, that was our pregame. Remind everyone, remind everyone that if we have something, remember one referee should step back and just watch the benches and that's it. Because well, that was now, a pregame, Vito. Remember, the guy yeah, farthest yeah, away from the play is going to stay back. Yeah, if you do it in your pregame, then it doesn't surprise you when it happens. That's the whole thing, even though it's mundane. Because now, since we have deemed this to be fighting, any player that comes off the bench, whether they participate in a fight or not, are coming They're off gone. the bench. Gone. They're that gone. Protection. Disqualification. Then you got to add up how many for what the technicals are. You need somebody to know that information. Otherwise, you can't eject anybody. And then when you get the videotape and say, well, you're right, but we missed it. This is HF versus Simeon. I'm sure this isn't the first time they've had this action. All right. How about this one? Are we good with that? That's a good yep. clip. Did you see what happened? Yeah, Tim was calling something up here at I half don't court. I don't have a slow action, so I'm just going to slow it up. The kid comes down, all right? Foul. Okay, we got a foul here, which means the whistle is probably blown here roughly. Okay, foul. And then what does the white player do? Keeps going. He keeps going. And so what does the green player do? Foul him. And what is he – what – is it a live ball or a dead ball when he fouls him? That's a dead ball. So, so where our official calls a foul. And right then here. He, and then he tees him up. There you go. I know it's yeah. blurry. Which, by rule, is the correct – is the correct penalty. I'm going to give you my two cents. And I actually talked to one of the officials on this game, so there's also – there's three layers. There's what you see on video, right? And then we can break down, and that's usually not realistic because in real time in a game, it's a little different. <clears throat> There's how the players perceive it. So I guess it could technically be four because you've got two sets of players, but how the players perceive it. And then there's how the game was being played. In a game where there's absolutely no problems and this happens, you've probably got nothing. In a game where there's a lot of junk happening all game, this might be a technical foul and a dead ball foul because they've got to set a precedent or they have already set a precedent or they're trying to get a hold of things. So we have to take this with a grain of salt as far as what's happening. What I'm going to say is, assuming this game is running normally, okay, no crap is happening, you don't have any big problems, I'm going to let this go. I'm not going to call a huge foul because why did that kid foul him? Because he kept going after the whistle. Because he kept going. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So it's not really the fault of the kid unless he really hits him hard, which could have, you know, be deemed as something else. It's almost, it's almost like you're penalizing a kid who's just continuing like the other kid was continuing. Yeah, you don't want to do that. That's when you tell the kid, that's when you tell the kid, stop on the whistle. But, but I think here's the thing, Josh. Tim, who is at center here, should have been running in once he said that, seen that keep going. And I think that's all part of stepping in on your call. And that's something, a point of emphasis on myself I'm working on to do better is stepping in on your calls 
to make sure. And on something like that, I mean, if you want to watch someone that's the best at stepping in, watch Ken Pink. That guy is the best at stepping in on calls than anyone I've ever seen. And the whole thing is that something like that, Ken would be all the way at the at the three-point line stopping it once he does that because he steps in. Okay, but can I just play uh, – not necessarily devil's advocate. I don't disagree with anything you said, Vito. Not at all. However, this was a pretty routine foul. Yeah. That whistle stops. Often we see players continue on after the whistle yeah. with no problems. And it just happens to be so – if you're doing it every time, as you said, you probably should. It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb as though, like, oh, no, what just happened? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the place doesn't look that crowded where you could say he couldn't hear the whistle. Yeah, but you can't stop the kid from continuing. I'm, so, to I'm still to confused basket. here, Josh. I, don't, I, I really don't know what I would do. But I, would you, have, you haven't talked to both the kids, obviously, to stop on the whistle, but are you penalizing? You know, anyone there? It depends on what Josh is saying. It depends on what was going on in the game before all that. So the trail, right. the trail blew his whistle for a foul. Right. Okay. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to say, oh, you shouldn't have won. I'm not gonna say, oh. so now since he blew his whistle, he has to assess a technical foul because it's, it's a technical intentional foul. Dead ball yeah. foul is a technical intentional foul. However, I had this last year, and I did a few things to try to appease everybody. But technically, it should be a technical foul on the white player as well. For, shooting, rule. After, for shooting after the whistle. By rule, correct. Josh? Um, yes. Vito said that he thought Tim should have kept going. Tim's on the move. When he makes the foul, when he makes the call, should he have continued on the move once he saw him continue? Is that is that Vito's point? Vito's I point think. is when he blows the whistle, he should be coming in. But uh, what I'm saying is, he is running up. He's got a foul. Where does Tim end up? I mean, he came all the way in. He's not going to keep running in because, uh, again, and I'm yeah. not trying to discount Vito. It's a routine, ordinary foul. Right. So, yes, let's say he's standing here, Phil, and he blows his whistle. He should then come in three, four steps. So now he's in with all these players. They all know this official is here. I better not do anything because he's right there watching me. I think that's Vito's point. Yeah, I mean, one thing is, I mean, we've all had it done. If you do varsity, Sometimes you don't hear your partner's whistle. You know, we talk in pre-games about double whistles. Sometimes, boy, I didn't even hear your whistle. Maybe he didn't hear it. You know, who knows? You know, he's down here. The lead's down here with, uh, with all the kids screaming and saying whatever they do, you know. So who knows? Maybe he didn't hear his whistle because it was the, the foul was all the way at, uh, mid, at half court. And, and the guy was in the back court when he made a call. Yeah. Correct. Now, if you – determine that he did not hear the whistle that will alter what I'm about to say right but section four of rule 10 player technical again article five says delay the game by acts such as failing and in possession to immediately pass the ball to the near official when a whistle sounds so if he knew the whistle sounded and he kept going on by rule you can give him a technical foul that mm -hmm. might be the way to go then the kid fouled yeah. him because he kept going so double tech on both of you Simultaneous technical fouls, no free throws. Like maybe it's out. If you won't call and go off, oh, oh, boom, boom, and you're good to go. So, so here's something to think about that, Josh. So now, can uh, the the lead official, since he called a technical and he signaled it, can he take it back and say, "Wait, we had a foul here," and he could say, "I didn't hear." He blew the whistle. I mean, so you're take saying, the technical back. Saying, Otherwise, I agree with you that I would tee both of them so you don't penalize the defense for playing defense. And all, he, that, was a, that was a common foul that he did on the kid, and the kid continued to shoot. You know what I mean? So, and, and the kid who fouled him after the, on the dead ball, it wasn't an egregious foul, correct? No, I think it was just a yeah. basketball you're foul. You're saying, can the trail say, oh, wait, there was a whistle up here. I, I didn't realize I blew my whistle not thinking – 
I think that's okay to do. Coach, play is dead. All action after is incidental. Right. Why would it be a technical if, it, if he hadn't heard the whistle? Well, I don't know. He might have deemed – I don't know what he deemed it, but he must have deemed that it was, you know, flagrant. Play it again. Let's see how hard he hit him. I didn't think he hit him that hard. I didn't think so either. Point. Now, again, I just want to mention, I spoke to one of the officials in this game, and he said – there was, there was a bunch of crap all game. We well, did it because we're trying to take control. And I uh, think that's great. Yeah, I mean, if you talk as a crew, let's tighten this thing up so it doesn't get out of hand. You don't have a fight. Then that's – maybe that is. But then I think if you did that, I think I tee both the kids then. But then taking that out of it, if it's not a game like that, whistle. So, I, I don't think – it seems unfair to me, but I mean, technically right by rule. So it looks I think like Tim I, was I, going I, to talk to him too. Like I think. Like, I, did you talk ahead, about Tim. that? Well, I was going to say, I think he, the, the lead to call the T left the scene of the crime too early too. <laughs> he should have stayed there. He calls the T and he leaves. Look, he's leaving already. There yeah, could be a fight what, there. You don't know what's yeah, going to happen. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. He calls a T and he leaves. I agree. Stand there, especially if Stay you there. Have, especially if you have a technical foul. That's what I'm saying. You don't know what's going to happen after a technical foul? Uh, that's a good observation. Good point. All right. Are we good with that? Can we move on? <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. All right. Can I? Can I play this at an AOS meeting next, or are you guys going to call me out? <laughs> no, you're good. We're going to call you out anyway. <laughs> Travel, yep. Good call, it, Kevin. Okay, now the point of this clip is he had a whistle, travel, and then what does the kid do? Exactly what the kid did in the last clip. Can I just point this out? Yeah. Before I'm going? Yeah. I'm talking to that kid. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, shoot I the agree. Ball after the whistle. That's a technical foul. I don't want to have to give you one of those. And usually the kids go, oh, hey, sorry, ref. Yeah, right. they do. But you need to talk to him. I'm not saying whack him with the, with the T, but if he just, if every official allows him to do it every game, he's going to keep doing it. And then you get into a situation where he drives the lane and gets fouled and you got to tee the other kid up. Right. Agreed. All right. So that's a talk to. Yeah. You guys see that? Absolutely. Look right here. This is a great, this school have kids that, you know, run their own little like sports program. And so we got a couple different angles. Tossed it in his head. I agree with that. Bam, yeah. got him. Wow. I didn't see it the second time around. Look, did you <laughs> see what he the did? First time. I've never seen oh, that. Did you see this? Number three said something, and he's like, don't you start either. Now, LaHorn Black can get away with a lot of stuff that maybe we can't get away with. But the point of this is, one, you can't let go a little. The kid just barely bumped him. But he threw the ball at his head, even if it was a barely bump. Right. If you ignore that, you're asking for trouble later on. Oh, yeah. You'll be in big trouble if you ignore that. Then three says something. I don't know what he said. And LaHorn's like, no, I'm not going to let you talk to me either. I've handled the situation. Don't make me come and handle it with you. And number three knew because he'd been talked to a couple times. My point is, don't let the little stuff just go. Address it. At least address it with a word. Right here. Ball. There it is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's classic Chicago public school ball. That's classic too. You always got to be paying attention. <laughs> always have to pay attention. Dead ball. Always got to pay attention. You don't get a break in a game. I like that one. This is my last technical foul, so I'm just going to play it.
For what? I didn't see. What did he do? He All right, watch it again. He teed the kid up. So what did he tee him up for? Did he kick him? Hey, did he say something? Did he verbalize it? We got a foul. The foul. Oh. Oh, did he go? Did he go to help that him up space. and then he walked I'm away? I'm gonna zoom him. I'm gonna zoom in. Look what the black kid does. He got the foul. Yeah, he's in his face. He got in his face and said something to him. I don't know what he said, but it doesn't matter what he said. Yeah, that's a T. Pretty sure he wasn't in And if you consider. let that go, you're going to ask for trouble later in the game. I talked to several of the officials on this game as well, and they said this game was out of control all game too. They kept they, – I think they had several T's in this game because the kids just didn't want to play basketball. Well, continue it. Continue it. Go ahead. Continue the video. Keep oh, it going. No, that's it. Well, keep it going again. Keep it. Let's see it again. Watch it all the way through. Okay, then he leaves the scene of the crime too early again. But, but here's another thing you need to right? know. Right? Look. He leaves. He, he, he leaves. The, guy, the guy's yelling at the guy. There could be a fight. Hold on. He just teed him up. Okay, watch. He leaves. Yeah, you're right. Maybe stay the ball. So, Tim's point is if you tee up a kid. Stay there. The tra but the trail's moment. walking in the cover. The trail's walking in the cover. You that's, still don't leave the scene of the crime. Right, but, but I agree with Tim. Just wait three, four, five seconds. Make sure that you do have an official there because if you don't, did you see where the trail was going? The trail's bending down. He can't he see the, anything. He, the ball. he, wasn't he can't see a thing. He's not seeing he's not seeing anything. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, not the trail, but the, the lead came from the baseline. He starts coming off. He's well, coming off. You right. He's not You're right. looking. He's not looking. He's kind of looking. Yeah, if the he, trails. If but, he just but, if he just waits five seconds so we know someone's there, I think you're better off as a crew. I, I agree. And here's another thing you have to know. When you know the teams that are playing, yeah. number four on Mundelein, they're in white, is their best player. And he is an instigator. <laughs> He's a good player, but, boy, he will get under your skin. And All right. Uh, All right, so I was talking with somebody today about information that you talk about in your pregame with your officials. Yeah. And I like and dislike some of the things that are said, and I'll tell you what they are, and we can debate them. I'm not – saying it's my way or the highway. One of the things is, like you said, Vito, if you have information about a player that is a little extra excited, that's good information because you want to be aware. It doesn't mean – we've talked about does it poison your mind so then when number four does the first thing, you tee him up because you've been thinking he's going to start trouble? Well, I hope not. But it does make you more aware that he may do something to cause trouble. But – my debate was someone had said, when you're standing there on the court with 10 minutes to go in the, in the game, it's a good idea to watch for the, who the shooters are and, and see who the defenders may be. And my two cents on that is why? If I know who the shooter is, does that change how I'm going to officiate the game? Me personally, no. The play that's in front of me, I'm going to officiate. And if that kid is the shooter and he happens to be there, Great, but that doesn't mean another kid's not going to shoot the ball or he is even going to shoot the ball. So my point is, use good information to help prepare and not stuff that you're just trying to keep yourself busy. Now, if you're doing it to keep yourself busy, because we all know standing there for 10, 20, 15 minutes sucks, that's fine. But don't tell me that it's worth, it's worth observing because, in my opinion, I'm going to officiate the play that's in front of me. I'm not going to say, oh, number three is the shooter. He's not in my area, so I can, I can relax a little. I agree with that. But then I agree with what Vito said. Like, sometimes you're going to be like, Vito's like, oh, I had that guy. You're roughing together. Like, oh, I had that guy a week ago, and he started a fight. And that's right. wonderful, especially if yeah, you had right? him earlier in the week. Or the I mean, season. I'll say I had um, – that's who was the team? There was a team that this kid was – oh, I know who it was. It was um, Elk Grove. Their biggest kid, he was number 20. I, I had them like four times in a row just before, which was amazing because they won two of their regionals, and I had it with Tim twice, matter of fact. But, Tim, what did I say? 
be prepared with number 20. He does a great job at taking charges. Right. Did, yeah. I, did I bring that up or what? Yeah, yeah. So when he took the first charge, was it a surprise to you? No. Because if you know that this kid does a great job at taking charges, and he's a big kid, he's a big kid, and he takes it on the chin, and he doesn't fall on every one. But, but he does a great job at taking charges. It did not surprise any of us, and I don't think we missed any of them in the two regionals that we had. Tim, you agree? I, I agree. That's good information. That, that is good information. Just like, I mean, I think I was talking to Josh the other, the other day, and I'm like, we've had, we had Loyola, and I told you, Vito. I'm like, I'm like, Loyola teaches take charges. They try to take a charge. And it doesn't mean you're going to call a charge every time. It means – that's what they try to do. It might be a block, but be ready for it. Because that's what that's what Lavatino teaches, right? Hey, John. I mean, knowing that I think is good. Also knowing that if you have a kid that is an instigator or a tool, okay? There was a kid on Elk Road that was the same way. They had two kids, and I told them, watch after the ball, the little stuff that he does after the ball. Be prepared for that. And sure enough, we caught it. And we had technical <laughs> during the game or what. Right. But I think – Making your, your, your teammates aware of it, that's what the pregame really, I think, is the best for us, knowing what, what history do we have? Is there any history between these two teams? And which kid should we really watch for? You know? Now, I also want to add, because for those of you that don't know, I grew up in Ohio. I didn't come from Chicago. And so when I first came here, people would say, oh, hey, this is a rivalry game. We want to make sure we understand. Don't assume your partner knows whether it's a rivalry game. It could be Chicagoland historic rivalry, but your partner may have no clue. Bring that up because a rivalry game could get out of control. I agree. So I had this year I had had Elgin, Elgin Larkin. So I had had Elgin, and that's a big rivalry game because they're only like three miles apart. So I asked the, the AD, is there any problems between the two teams? And you know what he told me? Not the kids are fine. It's the fans. The fans are <laughs> absolutely horrible. I mean, they're f bombing these kids. I just looked at this one adult. I said, "Seriously, you're talking to this 16 year old kid like that? You know, swearing at him, f bombing him, and everything." I'm like, Frank, you had a comment. Yeah. And so, just basically, what I'm getting from all these videos is basically we're going to use a technical kind of as a tool to kind of grab control of the situation where we feel like it's kind of getting out of our grasp. Would you like kind of agree with that, or because it seems like some of these you know texts we could have passed on, while some of them like we definitely have to get. But it seems like a majority of all the videos were like you know we got to use this to kind of grab control before this uh, before like a fight breaks out. Would you agree with that? Okay, so I'm I'm on two sides of the coin on this because. As many will tell you, what is a technical foul? It's just another foul. It's not anything more special or more important. However, my response always to that is, it carries a heavier penalty, right? Two free throws and they get the ball. So a lot of officials, and I'm one of them, don't want to just hand out a technical foul willy nilly because it's a pretty heavy penalty. Right. So yes, use your judgment to say, oh, that kid fouled on a dead ball because he meant to foul on a dead ball. That's a foul. But if it was kind of incidental, which is in the rule book, action after the whistle is to be considered incidental. Yeah. If it's just normal to the game and you think it didn't have any real bearing, yes, pass on it. If you think it walks the borderline of whether he did or didn't, I would say don't assess a technical foul, but definitely address the player and let Talk him the know. the kids, right? Address okay. the kids. Every okay. time you can address a player on anything questionable, and you may be in the wrong. Maybe you totally saw it wrong, and he, but it doesn't matter. You're the one in charge. You tell him, look, this is the way I'm seeing it, and if I continue to see it, I'm going to assess the technical foul. Okay, and thank you. You could always upgrade. You could always upgrade if you get more information or what. You could always say, decide, you know what, that was a technical foul. Very hard to call a flagrant foul and then be talked down to an intentional or a comment. Right. That looks bad. Doesn't mean it can't happen. Like in college, obviously, they have, you know, uh, it's replay. So they could say, we have this. We at high school don't have that. But to Vito's point, you want to upgrade. You don't want to downgrade. All right. I don't want to like a wife. Thank you. That's you all. That's all. Um, <laughs> Can Go I for money. Two more clips. Couple. Nope, I don't want that one. 
All right, here's a good one. This one's picking on me. We're going to have action over here. All right, now, real time, did anybody see anything worth calling? No. Nope. Right here. All right, I'm going to play it again and then let it play slow. A little bit of acting, I think, by the player, but let's see what actually happened. Look at his arm. Now, I'm way too close. That's me. I'm way too close to the plate to even see that. But his arm totally swim moves the, the, the kid off. He totally swim. That's illegal. That is a player control foul all day, in my opinion. He's gaining a big advantage by that. Yeah, now, I see it. Yeah, but how can you see through the player? For you, To your defense, how do you see through that blue player? So my, he doesn't. He's out of position. So my point is... <laughs> I'm I'm fat and slow, and I was actually semi-injured, so I wasn't over. That's a terrible excuse, but it's the truth. So I wasn't moving as well as I should have, and I'm way up here. The play's coming to me. I need to recognize the play's coming to me. I've got lots of room on the sideline. Yeah. I up, I can go down, and I just kind of sat there and let it come to me. Now, again, it's a regular play. Are you expecting this little swim move? I'm no. not. But, no. But it can still happen even if you're not expecting it. My point is, because I'm too close, these guys are so far away. Can they come in and help with that, or or is this just on the center official? What do you guys? I think? say that's just on you, Josh. <laughs> I'm not coming there and getting that. What if? What if the trail? Pause. What if the trail saw that play? He happened to be looking at it. He shouldn't be looking over there, but he. He was, and he saw it, and said, is it okay for him to come over and get it? Or are we saying he's way too far away, stay off of it? I say he's way too far away because, for one, he's, he, he has, he's closing down. He's not even uh, on the other side of the lane. He's got to come a long way to get that. I would say I would agree with Tim and say, listen, even if I saw it, that's not egregious enough of a foul for me Agreed. to come. All the way over, and now I'm making my partner look bad. He was right there. We're the only ones to know that I'm too close to the play. There's no way I can see it. But everyone else is like, he was right there. So I say, you know what? That's on my partner. He's going to have to explain himself. We're all big boys. We can explain whether we got one or didn't get one. And I can say Agreed. to the coach, hey, I was too close. You're right. I missed it, or I don't know. Yeah, he just. But I think, unless it's like a huge crash, or something that your two players go down and, and, oh, my goodness, how did he not get that? You got to let that go. That's just my philosophical opinion. That's, that's, you mentioned that it made, made you look bad, Josh. The trail would look even worse. Yeah, I agree, Bill. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. I don't we want to get the call right, though? I mean, if I see, you know, the offensive player kind of pushing off with his arm, and, I mean, it's clear as day, and even if it's in front of my partner, it's like you have to call that. No. no. Okay, so no, no. no. Frank, <laughs> no. Frank, you got to be real careful with that, Frank. I, I know, I know. I'm just. I mean, not everything. You know, Josh is quoting really. the book, but if you do everything by the book, and even Fred, no, he'll say Vito, sometimes. Vito, this, this, would be, this would be based off my pregame and the relationship with my partners. I would, I would be comfortable yeah. with making that call. Yeah. yeah, but I think anytime something's right in front of your partner, I think you got to let him live or die with it. And yeah, Frank, look, Frank, look where that, that, Frank, Bill look, shaking his head. He's done this a long, long time. I Frank, mean, look, 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 Frank, look where that lead is. Look where that lead is. How is he yeah, going to call far, that? He's far. You're right. You're right. That's what I'm saying. He's just too far, Frank. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> get it. Get you don't to go get another Corona. Yeah, I got thirsty. <laughs> just because Josh has a nipple on his. I'm trying to find this other one. Stay in your area, I guess. All right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go, Frank. Stay Good in your one, primary. Frank. You're learning. Well, I don't know where it is, but um, I want to say, Frank, you're right. We do want to get the call right. Absolutely want to get the call right. But yeah, whatever one of these said was, one, you need to stay in your primary. Uh, Tim and I heard this podcast from Mark Davis. I think it was Mark Davis. Yeah, it was. And they said that the NBA 
obviously they've got a lot more money, right, to do stuff, but they track all the calls. And it was something like 90% of some sort. When right. officials called out of their primary area, they got it wrong. Wrong. 90% of the time. So just because you think you have it right, when you're not in your primary, you may not have gotten it right. You have to trust your partner. And again, if it's a huge crash or something egregious that they missed, and don't come to them and say, I thought you were straight line. No, don't give me that straight line crap. <laughs> don't give me I thought. <laughs> and there might be a reason why, yes, I saw him push off. But what you didn't see on the other side was the kid was holding his jersey. And so right. I let it play on because there was no advantage either way. I there mean, you go. Example, but so just be careful with, well, we want to get the call right. And even if you're a buddy of mine and you say, well, he said he's got no ego out there. We've all got egos. <laughs> nobody, nobody likes a call called right in front of them. And I don't care who you are. You, you can even say, well, it's okay. Yeah, I didn't see it. No, nobody likes it. Because to Bill's point, it makes me look bad. It makes me look like I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, the and, but the opposite side of that, Josh, is if you're trail or sea, your job is also to be watching for traveling when it's in the lane because the lead is not watching for the travel. Well, that's a whole. Well, that's you a, coming that's in a, and calling a travel would be something that would be okay, Frank. That's okay. I agree. That's a little different. I agree. Right. All right. Let's end this. I'm gonna not gonna keep you any longer than an hour. I want to end this on a few jump balls. I don't think there's many people out there that admire a good jump ball as much as I do. Me and my crew, we talk about once the jump ball's over, our game's downhill from there because we perfect that jump ball. Oh, Josh, you got to show yourself. Oh, my off. goodness. Look at that. That's nice a boss, perfect Josh. toss. It he must have had the perfect apex. It stops right where they can stop jumping. Uh, a little over to the right. Yeah, I think the green had an advantage. Beautiful. Here's another Don't one. Ego there. Oh, that my goodness. That was a good one. Uh, <laughs> that was a good one. Oh, that was pretty good. Now, I want to make a point. Look at that. Look at that. Wow, no spin or nothing. Wow. This is, honest to God, I want to make a point here. If you watch my hand and they say not to do this, you don't want to come down and up because you don't want the players to be able to time out the jump. Right? So it basically, and there's a little bit, goes straight up from the stationary spot up. That's what you want to work on because if you're allowing a smart jumper to time out that jump, he's going to get it every time. Yeah. Here's a couple bad tosses. Please don't call out any play officials if you know who they are. No. I... This was the opening tip. It's an overtime game. Way too high. Way too high. Well, I hope I hope the I hope the off guys called it back. He got a chance. He got a chance to do it again though in the overtime. Yeah, he was laughing. He got he was a chance laughing. in the overtime. That's better. No way too high, but the green player was smart, and he knew what happened last time, so he waited. Yeah. Yeah, that's still too high. Better too high than too low. Well, look at that one. He might have just handed it to him. <laughs> now, listen, that's a bad technique. Don't do that. That looks awful. He's not even in the center. He's <laughs> right over here. That's awful. It's more Don't like a finger roll. But then watch what he does after he tosses the ball. He's going to go get him as – oh, wait. Let me run in front of the player real quick. Just wait for the player to go around you. I usually just stay in one spot and don't move till the player's pass. Just stand pass. there and wait till the player – That's right, Frank. Like That's Frank right. Said. Wait till they clear because otherwise you're – what if he decides to go fast right when you pass by him? I scream. All right. Can I ask a dumb question? Yes. Thank you. Thank God your daughters look like your wife. <laughs> <laughs> one hand or two hand? Does it matter? Thanks for one well, hand. Well, depends how big you are, Phil. Oh! <laughs> I'm big. <laughs> Phil, it doesn't matter whether it's one hand they or two They go with two hands. A lot of guys say, I can't get control with one hand. That, then use two hands. A lot of guys say, two hands feels weird. Whatever is comfortable to you, but don't do the whole, okay, here we go. And some guys will build, all right, guys, I'm going to bounce the ball twice. Only to Wisconsin. Throw it up. You just told them when you're going to throw it up. Don't do that. 
If you're going to bounce yeah. it twice, bounce it twice. Fine. Boom, boom, and up. But don't tell them what you're going to do because they're going to – If the point is you need to give a fair chance to both jumpers at the ball. Yeah, we're only doing that once a game usually. If you're good. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, joining, guys. Um, hopefully you all stay in safe and uh, we'll be released soon. I, well, I'm hoping – I hope so. Soon. I hope so. You guys have I like else? this. Go. Yeah, good, Josh. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. Josh, Josh and everyone, stay healthy. Josh, another one. Hey, He's like the hey, nice seeing you, Vito and Billy. Cheers. 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 Thanks, Thanks, everyone, for Thank you, guys. If we're Take still care, everybody. Stars, uh, for another month, I might have another one.